I, I've never understood long-term contracts. The whole time that this channel has been in existence, I've talked about how I think four years is perfect. Four years is a perfectly reasonable contract. I think anything beyond four years, you're getting into dangerous territory. And, and a lot of the players that we talk about being overpaid and players that we talk about as, well, this guy should be traded, but he can't be. It's usually a long-term contract. The Buffalo Sabres, uh, during their annual swoon, uh, and they, they got it out of the way early this year, it seems. There's still time to get it back together, though. There is. And Jeff Skinner can be a positive, and he wants to be. Even today, he said he doesn't want to go anywhere else. He doesn't want to trade. His agent, Don Meehan, has stepped in and talked to Kevin Adams. Kevin Adams is a guy I do not uh, envy on any level whatsoever. Kevin Adams has come into a team that was being run poorly by Jason Botterill, right? And Botterill may have had some good ideas in there, but some of the iffy ones have turned into these issues that Buffalo... It's going to take a while to figure this out. And so a brand new GM to get things fixed, it, it it's not an overnight thing. Not usually, anyways. Unless you inherit a team that's close. And I'm talking about what Chuck Fletcher got in Philadelphia, what Don Waddell got in Carolina, where you make the right tweaks and things are good. Buffalo, it feels like they're at a different level when it comes to issues. Now, they brought in Taylor Hall. And when they brought in Taylor Hall, I, I think that affects Jeff Skinner's spot on this team. And Taylor Hall, remember, it's a show-me contract. So at the end of this year, we have a whole other conversation to take place around Jeff Skinner than the one that's, that's developing now. Now, what Jeff Skinner was quoted as saying today is, I don't think you learn anything extra by not being out there. Meaning, I've been scratched three games in a row. I don't feel like this is doing anything for me, and I don't think it's doing anything for the team. And here's where the issue comes in. So let's look at their top six according to their lines, their practicing lines today. Now, they actually have Lazar as the first line center with Eichel not being out there. But I thought, all right, so Eichel's the top center. So Olofsson, Eichel, Reinhardt, top line. Olofsson producing about a point a game. Reinhardt's playing very, very well. Eichel's not producing the way you want him to, but Eichel's a center. Skinner's not a center. So... Eichel playing well and not playing well has nothing to do with having Jeff Skinner on the top line. Olofsson and Reinhardt have both been good. Second line, you've got Stahl in the middle. You've got Hall and Cousins on the wings. Hall only has the one goal, but he's producing points. Cousins, excellent rookie. He's a right winger. Skinner is traditionally a left winger. Now, would it be odd to throw him on his off wing? Not really. Would that be a problem to throw on his off wing? I don't think so. But that being said, I'm not sure how you fix this because Skinner in the bottom six doesn't work either. And at practice today, he's on the fourth line. That doesn't work. So that's the problem. And he turns 29 on May 16th. So the other problem is Skinner's getting older. He's got a contract that has a lot of years left in it. And... I don't know how you fix this. Let's look at his goal progression throughout his career. So what's what's weird is that he's he's up and down and up and down. So 20 goals in 2011-2012, 13 goals in 2012-2013, lockout shortened season. 33 goals the year after that, drops to 18 the year after that, goes up to 28, went up to 37. So that's one of those rare up and up more. And then he dropped to 24. Goes to Buffalo, gets 40 goals. And he took advantage of that 40-goal season. July 7th of 2019, not that long ago, eight years, $72 million. So why does Botterill pull the trigger on that? Because the other optic that he could have been choosing was to let Skinner walk away as a 40-goal scorer and sign for free somewhere else on a team that desperately needs both goals and the playoffs. So he gave him $72 million over eight years. The biggest problem I have with it, it's also got a no-movement clause. Some general managers sign these big contracts, and they give them both the money and the no-movement clause, and that seems to be what hurts. You can give them the big money or the no-movement clause, but if they get both, there really isn't anything the team got out of this. They they did get to, to go out there, have a press conference, and say, hey, look, we've got a guy who wants to be here. He wants to be a saber. And he scored 40 goals, and we feel like we can build around this. The problem was, when you looked at previous seasons, you could see it was a career year. The other problem is, 
that since then he's struggled and the go-to for everybody is, well, he, he should be playing with Eichel. They should just stick him on a line with Eichel. There's always a message I think that sends that I, I've never been a fan of. So let's just say that they say, okay, we're going to put Skinner on a line with Eichel and Reinhardt. Okay. Olofsson drops. Taylor Hall ends up on the third line. So that's, again, to me, signing Hall tells me they didn't have any faith in Skinner having a bounce back year. Skinner scores 14 goals last season, which was low. This year in 14 games, he has one assist. His five-on-five -five ice time is about 11 and a half minutes per game. His overall ice time is 13 minutes and 36 seconds, which is a career, career low, including his rookie season when he won the Calder. Skinner can be a very good player. He can be an excellent goal scorer. When he left Carolina, him being sent out of Carolina was because he wanted this big contract, and Carolina said no. So at the time that Buffalo made that trade, it looked like it was a huge steal for Buffalo that they got him for a prospect, which still hasn't made the NHL, and a few draft picks. But when you look back at this trade, you can say, you know what? Carolina could not have signed him to this contract, and if they did... Then they'd be having a hard time keeping Aho, keeping Svechnikov, keeping that Svechnikov, keeping that entire core together in Carolina, and it would have been done to keep Skinner, and it would have caused more problems later than it would have solved. So sometimes, while you may look at a trade and say, "Well, the best player went to that team, so that should be the winner," and that's normally how I view it. In this case, the contract that went with the player kind of serves as an anchor. So here's the problem. At the end of this season, I expect Buffalo, unless something dramatic happens, I expect Kevin Adams to hold his nose and buy out this contract. Now, you save two-thirds, due to his age, you save two-thirds of the contract's value. But, there's a giant asterisk with that with this contract. So next year, they would save $7.5 million by buying out Skinner. Done. That's $7.5 million. You can take that seven and a half million. You can throw it down on that. That you can you probably bring in two decent players, and you know Skinner can go on and sign a contract somewhere else, probably a show me contract, and maybe some of that seven point five million you can use to keep Hall around if Hall uh, impresses enough that you want to keep him around and if he wants to stay in Buffalo. But year two of that contract has a seven point five million dollar signing bonus. So let's review the contracts long. It's got a no movement clause and a big old fat signing bonus in it. Uh, that signing bonus means they only save twenty-seven thousand dollars. Well, twenty-seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-eight dollars in twenty twenty-two, twenty twenty-three. You can plan for that. Yes, it's a couple years down the road, but it means that seven and a half million they have in twenty twenty-one, twenty twenty-two, they lose it the year after because of the signing bonus that's attached to that year of the contract. So it. <laughs> Even buying this out, <clears throat> uh, do you wait until after 2023 to buy it out? He, it's it's $9 million in cap space for Jeff Skinner, who has been a healthy scratch for three games in a row. You're putting him back in the lineup in all likelihood for the next game, and you're throwing him on the fourth line where he's completely not suited to play. And this is this is a problem. You don't You don't have a spot for him in the top six, and he's not a good player in the bottom six. That's not where he belongs. And you certainly don't want to take $9 million in your cap and have it watching from above. It sucks. So it, it is not an easy situation. And then, of course, if they buy it out, there's six years left in the contract. So that means for 2027, 2028, all the way to 2032, 2033, they have a tacked on cap penalty of $2.472 million. Or, more exactly, $2,472,222 in dead cap space to get rid of the contract. It it is it is a rough situation and then the other problem is you have a Buffalo team that is trying to build themselves up into the playoffs. They are trying to get out of this forever rebuilding mode that they're in. You've got Cousins coming in. It looks like he's going to be a good player, but now you'd be losing Skinner, who was your your poster boy a couple years ago, and the team would just seem like it's spinning its wheels. And now you're kind of buying out a really bad contract in order to try to fix the situation you're left with. Kevin Adams doesn't have an easy job. He really doesn't. 
I look at this team in the forward group, I go, eh, it's okay. It's probably not a playoff team. Defense, it's okay. Probably not a playoff team. Goaltending, Olmark's really good. Hutton, mixed bag right now. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know that that tandem could get you a playoff spot. So that's, it, the Skinner situation is just a microcosm of what's going on with this team. This is continual issues. And again, it's a brand new GM who's brand new to the job. And he inherits this. And I've seen people say, well, they need to fire Rolf Kruger. Okay, so let's say they fire Rolf Kruger and a new coach comes in. How do you deploy Skinner without making somebody else mad? If you throw Taylor Hall on the third line, Hall doesn't belong on the third line. You're not busting Olofsson down to the third line. Are you putting Skinner on the right wing? Cousins goes down to the third line? Maybe. But again, this is a really difficult situation. And... It's not one that I envy. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you fix the whole Skinner situation in Buffalo? Is it a buyout at the end of this year? Probably. And then that causes all kinds of other issues after that. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.